In the last video, we filled out a sheet talking about all of the different ways that we could prove that a quadrilateral was a parallelogram. And in this video, I want to fill out the rest of that form, which is dealing with the other three special types of quadrilaterals that we spend a lot of time on in geometry. All right, so the first one is rectangles. So rectangles are, that's a Sesame Street shape. What is it that makes a rectangle kind of a special shape? special, you know, different than a parallelogram. So a parallelogram is a shape that might look, I don't know, this is kind of our go-to shape for a parallelogram. And this is a rectangle. What is it that makes rectangles kind of rectangular? Well, what it is, is it is a quadrilateral, quadrilateral, with the thing that makes this special is that those angles are all right angles. Four right angles. All right. And then there's a second way. Um, let's say that we happen to know that it was a parallelogram. Let's say that we were already given that the shape was a parallelogram. In this case, we don't need to find out that all four angles are right angles. We actually only need one right angle. And the third thing is something that's interesting about the diagonals of a rectangle. Let me draw these. So here, I've got these two diagonals. And like I say, you can kind of see that they bisect each other. Each one of them is split in half by the other one. Rectangles obviously have the same property, but there's something that's special about these diagonals that weren't true about those diagonals. Can you guess what it is? Well, it needs to be a parallelogram. And the diagonals are congruent to each other. Congruent diagonals. So if we know something is a parallelogram and we measure the two diagonals and find that they're the same length, I'll, that's all I need to know to know that it's a rectangle. All right, a rhombus is kind of this shape. So it's got that parallelogram-y sort of angles, but there's something about that. Uh, maybe I didn't draw it perfectly well, something that makes that rhombus-y. And it's a quadrilateral with, in this time, rectangles. We needed the angles to all be congruent to each other, to all be right angles. With a rhombus, we need all of the sides to be congruent. So all four of these sides are the same length. And like with a rectangle, there's, a, there's an extra rule that if we already knew something is a parallelogram, we only need to know that there are two consecutive congruent sides. Remember, we already know that the opposite sides, I already know that these two sides are congruent and these two sides are congruent to each other. So all I need to know is that this side is congruent to this side. And then I know that it's a rhombus. Okay, so I only need to check two sides of a rhombus to see, or, 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 of a parallelogram to make sure that it's a rhombus. If I don't know that it's a parallelogram though, if all I know is that it's a quadrilateral, I need to check all four sides. And then the last thing is once again, something that's special about these diagonals. With the rectangle, they were congruent to each other. Here, the diagonals of a rhombus are not congruent to each other, but they do have an interesting feature, which is that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so that is, it breaks it into four triangles, 
every time a rectangle is, is, is broken up by its diagonals, it gets broken into four triangles. Here, they're all right triangles. And the last thing is a square. And so a square is a rectangle because it's got all right angles and it's got all of the properties of a rhombus because all four sides are the same thing. So to prove that something is a square, you need to be both a rectangle and a rhombus. Okay, so we could do any anything from this column and anything from this column, as long as I got one of each, I've proven that that's a square. Okay, so that's going to be a good reference sheet along with the formula table that we came out with before that's going to help us to do these calculations where we're given four coordinate points and we need to talk about the quadrilateral that's formed from it.